everybody. So um, thanks for tuning in. We are going to do a 45 minute practice this morning that focuses on um, shoulder opening and balance. Those are our two focal points. We'll also work through a little bit of hip opening and the normal whole body workout that you get from a yoga practice, but those are our two points of focus just as sort of a, um, an antidote to some of the stuff that we've been doing in the workouts lately. So let's start in child pose. <coughs> Bring your knees down to the mat. Bring them out wide. Send your tailbone towards the back of the mat. Honor any tightness that you've got in your knees or your hips. As you settle your forehead down to the mat, stretch your arms out nice and long. Take a big breath in. Open your mouth, let it go. Let's do that again, breathe in. Open, let it go. Third time, deep breath. Bring that air all the way to the bottom of your lungs, down to the bottom of your belly. Breathe in a little more, hold. Open your mouth, let that go. And then set up a smooth, rhythmic breath. Breathe in through your nose and out through your nose. Noticing the lengths of your inhales and exhales, make them equal as best you can. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Bring your fingers up onto the tips, sort of tenting your hands, shift your hips back a little bit more, just a gentle transition, hips back, and then walk your hands forward. Notice your shoulders, shoulders are soft, come together on your back. And then bring some integration into this shape by tightening your belly, bring your belly button in towards your spine. And notice what shifts that creates in this particular shape. Let yourself settle here. Feel your connection to the mat and to the earth. Feel the breath. Feel an empty. And then walk your hands off the mat to the right side. Press that left hip down as you press the left hand forward into the mat. And maybe you want to begin to get just a little bit of a twist here so you can walk that left hand over farther and walk the right hand back to the edge of the mat. Drop in that left shoulder. And then walk back through center. <coughs> Take a one breath pause right in the center. And then walk your hands over to the other side, to the left side. Walking that right hand farther, and then bring the left hand back towards the edge of the mat. Get a little twist here if that feels like something you want to play with, just to begin to allow those shoulders to slide together, belly come to the spot. One more breath. And then walk your hands back into that child's pose. Take a couple more breaths here. Know that. Anytime the practice gets too intense or you just want to catch your breath and hit reset on your belly lock and your breath, come back right here. Any pose can look just like child. Keep settling your hips down a little bit lower. And then press up. Come into tabletop. Be very intentional about setting up your table. So bring your wrists underneath your shoulders. Bring your knees underneath your hips. Engage that belly. Belly button comes towards your spine. Press down. All ten fingers and your palms into the mat. Press your knees and the tops of your feet into the mat. Draw your belly into your spine even tighter. And then press down with the tops of your feet. Lift your knees just a half inch or so off the mat. Just to build some integrity in your belly. And then on your exhale, lower the knees back down, and we begin to go into some cows and cats. So we're articulating the spine, bringing the head and tailbone up on your inhale, shoulders back, and then round it off on your exhale, pressing down into the earth, tailbone goes down, crown of your head goes down, about three or four more of these. And be really mindful as you come through, you're drawing that pubic bone up towards your low ribs as you come into that cat. 
and then you're separating them as you come into cow. But you're keeping that belly integrity so that in the cow, your belly is not just relaxing and dumping down. You're keeping your spine protected even as you move it. Finish that round, come back to center. And begin to sort of take that shape and put it in a side-to-side -side dimension. So bring your left shoulder towards your left hip, send your gaze back to that knee or the left foot. Inhale, come back to the center. Exhale, go the other way. Trying to articulate that spine in two different planes here. And this movement is probably not going to be as big as your cat-cow. But just notice the sensation that you get in those vertebrae and keep your back supported with your belly. One more round. And then come back to center. Shift your left hand forward just in front of your face. Reach your right hand up. Draw your belly into your spine here. A few twists and then thread the needle. Bring that right shoulder down to the mat. Walk your left hand forward into the right. Yeah. Just work that right shoulder down. The support we began to build in the belly is still important right here. Feel some space open between your scapulas. If you want a little bit more, you can bring that left foot out to the side, pressing the blade of the foot down, but that's an option, that's not a have to. Couple more breaths. And on your next inhale, make your way back, come to tabletop. Really get grounded here, press it in through the earth, then slide that right hand forward, reach the left arm to the ceiling, and then draw it in through the belly, bring the left shoulder blade down, the left shoulder head down to the mat. As you twist, draw that belly into your spine. You can walk that right hand to the top left corner of the mat. Get a nice twist here. Begin to articulate your shoulders just a little bit. One more breath. And then make your way back up. Find your tabletop. And then tuck your toes. Keep your hands right where they are. Press yourself back into down dog. Now this is a fairly short downward facing dog and I'm having you start here for a reason. I want you to send that tailbone up to the sky and then lift up on your toes on your inhale. Press your heels down to the earth on your exhale. Let's do that five more times. Up, breathe in, down as you breathe out. Bring some stretch into those Achilles and those calves, into the hamstrings. Three more. Pay attention to the grounding in your hands. Keep it all five fingers on both hands pressed in, both palms pressed in. Last one, lift up. And then exhale, press down. Walk your dog. Alternating side to side. And then find stillness. Press your heart back towards your thighs. And then walk your hands one hand length forward. So look at where your uh, tips of your fingers are, tips of your uh, middle fingers. Set the heel of your hand there. And then press back into this longer dog. It changes things a little bit. Internally rotate your thighs. Press them back. Press your heels down. Your heels are going to press more back than down in this long down dog. And then walk the dog a little bit here. And then begin to walk your feet up towards your hands, keeping your legs as straight as you can. Come up onto the tips of your fingers if you need to, and then find your rag doll. Palms rest in the creases of your elbow, swaying a little bit side to side.
and then stay in this ragdoll fold, switch up your bind. Interlace your fingers behind your back, lift your arms off your back, let your shoulders roll together and your heart open, then drop your head. The more you engage your feet here and energize your legs, the more ability you have to just let your spine hang nice and heavy. Another breath. And on your exhale, bring your fingertips down to the floor. Turn your toes out. Actually, now keep your feet straight ahead for this. Lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Reach up for tall mountain, shoulders onto your back, belly to your spine, and then on your exhale, center your palms down, arms down to the side, palms forward. Turn your feet out now a little bit. Keep your heels under your hips and settle into Malasana, into your yogi squat. Yeah. So keep your feet as close together as you can. If you want to set them out, instead, just come up onto your toes to sink your hips nice and low. Inhale, come all the way up, reach up, and do this about four more times. Exhale, slow and easy, settle down. Maybe your, hip, your heels stay on the floor this time. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale now. How's this feel on your ankle? Not good? Inhale up. Feel it. So I'm not in here by myself. Jamie is right over here. Last one. Come on, belly in, and then settle down. I'm gonna stay here for about three or four breaths. So you can play with lifting heels, dropping your hips, and then settling your heels down. My hips are still a little tight from yesterday's workout. It's just part of it. And on your exhale, fold forward, bring your toes straight ahead, Heel toe your feet together, either just under your hip bones or toes touching. Lift up halfway. Shoulder blades come on your back. Exhale, fold. Do that again. Lift up. Shoulders separate. Collarbones go together. Or I'm not collarbones. I'm sorry. Scapulas go together in the back. Heart opens is what I'm trying to say. Belly to your spine. Exhale, fold. Do it again. Lift up halfway. Drive your heels into the floor. Bring some length into your hamstrings. Heart opens. Exhale, fold. Let's go through two sun A's. Inhale, rise up, reach up, look up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, step or float to the back of your mat, exhaling down to low plank. Inhale for cobra, hips on the floor or up dog. Just feet, tops of the feet on the floor, belly engaged, hips lifted, exhale back, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, breath out, see the top of the mat, step or float, lift halfway, exhale fold, inhale rise up, move with your breath, slower or faster than me, doesn't matter, exhale fold, send that tailbone back, Currently the head comes down, Lift halfway, step back, high to low plank, one smooth motion, elbows squeezed in, inhale, up dog, tops your feet into the mat, roll over your toes for downward facing dog. Breath in, breath out. A couple of sun knees now, bend your knees, see the top of the mat, float to the top of the mat. Lift up halfway, exhale, fold. Inhale, right into chair pose. Sink your hips deep, bring your knees back so that they're over your ankles. Sink a little lower. Interlace your hands behind your back. Open your shoulders, open your heart. Exhale, fold forward as you release your bind. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, step back. High to low plank. Inhale, up dog, tops your feet into the mat. Hips forward. Legs engaged, downward facing. Warrior one, right foot, step it forward. Come all the way up as you press the blade of your left foot into the mat. Left hip comes forward, right hip comes back. Open up, look up. 
And then as you exhale, interlace your fingers behind your back, lift your arms up, and get your right shoulder inside of your right knee. Your sternum comes down towards the floor, press back into that left foot, press down into the right foot. Inhale, come all the way back up. For your one, open it for two. Look over your right middle finger, belly in. Reach back, peaceful warrior. Keep the bend in that front knee and the windmill down. High plank to low plank. Inhale for your upward facing dog. Hips towards your hands. Exhale back. Downward facing dog. Same thing, left side. One big breath brings you all the way up. Inhale brings you all the way up to warrior one. Right hip forward, left hip back. Settling. Interlace your hands. Exhale. Humble warrior. Couple of breaths here. Press the mat in the opposite directions with your feet. Engage your legs. Let your shoulder blades come to meet each other on your back. You're ready for this. Build in some heat. Inhale, come up. Where you're one. Exhale out for two. Reach back, peaceful warrior. Send that left knee forward. Reach up, see the sky. And then a windmill motion takes you high to low plank. Inhale, up dog. Exhale back. Downward facing dog. We're going to do one more of those sun bees. Take a breath in. Let it go. Move with your breath. Make this a smooth flow. Float to the top of the mat. Halfway lift. Fold. Inhale into chair pose. Utkatasana. Thunderbolt pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, step or float back. High to low plank. Inhale for up dog or cobra. Shoulders together on your back. Exhale back. Downward facing dog. Right side. Warrior one. Rise up with your inhale breath. Exhale, humble warrior. Moving a little bit faster. Just a one breath hold. Inhale, come all the way back up to one. Exhale. Open for two. Reach back peaceful warrior as you breathe in. And then exhale. A little plank as you breathe out. Inhale, upward facing dog. Roll over your toes. Downward facing dog, left side. All the way up. Breathe in. Exhale, humble warrior. Drop that left shoulder inside your left knee. Inhale, come all the way back up. Exhale, open to warrior two. Shoulders together and down. Reach back, peaceful warrior. And then on your exhale, high plank, a loop. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, child's pose. Let your breath come back. Re-engage your belly. Sink your hips. For me, my hips go closer to my heels after I'm warm. It might or might not be the same for you. Press the mat forward. Spread all 10 fingers nice and wide. Allow your breath to settle back in. That smooth Ujjayi breath. We're gonna make our way to standing. I'm gonna give you just a breath or two at the top. If you have something you can use for a block, you're gonna to need to get that close by. So tuck your toes, press yourself up, downward facing dog. And then again, walk your feet up to the top of the mat. Find your forward fold, lift that way. Exhale fold. Inhale, come all the way up for Tadasana. And then bring your arms down by your sides. If you need to get a block or something you can use for a block, go ahead and do that. You can use like a book, 12 pack, a uh, piece of furniture, keg. keg. <laughs> small car, whatever you have, child, dog, whatever you have available, just keep that handy. So you're going to need it. All right, so we're going to work into our balance series a little bit here. Our core is warm, so you're going to use this draw in nice and tight. Inhale, reach up, hold. Next inhale, bring that right knee up into your heart for stork pose. 
Hold here for a couple of breaths. Find your equanimity, find your balance, draw into the center, and then transition into warrior three. You're sending your arms forward, fingers forward, foot back, toes turned down. Get nice and long here, reach forward with your fingers, press back with the sole of your foot. And then on your exhale, bring your fingertips down to the floor or to a block for standing splits. If you want some supreme balance, you can bring your hand to your ankle, one hand or both hands, if that's in your practice where you want it to be. And then on your exhale, bring that right foot down by the left. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Come straight into stork on the other side here. Lift that left knee up or into your belly. Hold, open your heart, spread your fingers, and then transition into your warrior three. Now this can be a supported warrior three here. If that feels more appropriate to you, you can bring your fingertips down to a block, or it can be unsupported. Hold here for a couple breaths as you get long. And then on your exhale, bring your fingertips down to the floor, lift that left leg up to the sky, keep grounding that right heel into the mat. Maybe one or both hands, find your ankle, maybe not. And exhale, bring that left foot down. We're gonna do the same thing on each side, and we're gonna move almost in a flow. Lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Come all the way into stork on that right side. Exhale, transition into warrior three. Hold here for a breath. And then exhale, find your standing splits. Lift that right leg higher. And then on your exhale, bring it down by your left. Lift halfway. Fold. Come up. All the way into stork. Go into your belly, lift the knee higher, and then transition. Push your foot to the back of your mat. Reach your fingers to the front of the mat. Make sure your shoulders aren't up by your ears. Nice and long here. I can always ground your fingers. Exhale, fold. Bring the left leg up high. Press the right heel down towards the mat. And then exhale into forward fold. Find ragdoll here, just move your feet hips distance apart, which is hip point distance apart. So they're really like two fist lengths. Sway a little bit side to side. Let go of that series. Everything hang nice and heavy. And bring your fingertips down to the floor. Bring your feet a little closer together. We're still on 12 o'clock. Lift that way. Fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Now you're going to need your block in front of you here, so I'm going to go ahead and set mine there if you need to move it. And, and find eagle pose. So you're going to lift that right leg, cross it over your left, and then cross your right arm under your left arm, or just find opposite shoulders if that's too much going on. So squeeze into center, belly into spine, shoulders back. Hold for another breath, and then transition into airplane. Just like warrior three, except arms down by your sides, palms face the floor, shoulders back, heart open, then find your standing half moon. Bring your left fingertips down to something solid, the floor or a block. Lift that right leg nice and high. Stack your right hip over your left hip. Maybe you bring your gaze up to your right hand. Hold for three, two, one, and fold forward. Lift halfway. Shift the block a little bit over to the right side. Fold. Inhale, come all the way back up. Arms down by your sides. Find your eagle pose, the other side. Wrap your left leg over. Maybe that left foot tucks behind. Maybe the left foot uh, toes are there for some balance. Tuck your left arm under your right. Press your palms together. Knit your low ribs in. Squeeze into the center. Find your drishti, your gaze point. Transition 
here, plank, left leg extends, foot, toes turned down, heart opens, hold here for one more breath, and then find your standing half moon, you can put the block a little outside of your right foot, it makes it a little bit more accessible, press down in your right heel, reach up with your left fingertips, one more breath, and on your exhale, hold one more. Hang out here for a breath, take a breath in and out. On your inhale, lift halfway. We're gonna do the same thing one more time. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. And come into that eagle pose. Right leg crosses over, right arm crosses under. Elbows shoulder high. Take your hips down towards the earth. Find something new in this passage. Transition into airplane. Wobbling's good, falling is good. You can always come right back. Heart opens. Feel your hands, your palms supported on those two columns of air. And then find your half moon. Left fingertips come down to a block or the floor. Reach your right arm up. Fingertips spread wide. Lift that right leg. The more you turn it on, the wider it gets. Hold for one more breath. Hold. Slide your block over. Lift halfway. Hold. All the way up. Arms by your sides. You know where to go. This is eagle pose. Left leg wraps over. Left arm wraps under. Movement is familiar to you now, so explore it a little bit more deeply. Squeeze your thighs together, sink your hips. Hold for another breath. Transition smooth as possible over into that airplane. Vikasana. Heart opens. Toes on your right foot face forward, left foot face down. And now transition into your standing half moon. Easy for me to say. Ground your foot, ground your fingers, lift your left arm, turn that left leg on, stack your hip. To three, two, one, and then let it go. Find your forward fold. Get a little sway here, left to right. Lift up halfway. And we're going to do two more poses just by themselves. Two more balanced poses. Fold. And you'll come all the way back up. Reach up. And then bring your arms down by your sides. And notice your posture here. So you want that tailbone tucked, shoulders back, palms forward. And lift your left arm, palm faces forward. Reach back, grab the inside of your right ankle or that foot your knee down, or push your knee down, kick your foot back, reach forward for dancer pose. To three, opposite motions here, reaching with your left hand, kicking with your right foot. Two, one, exhale, come all the way back up. Just come into the other side, inhale, lift, right arm. Get your left foot with your left hand. This one is harder for me. Left knee goes down, kick back, reach forward, hinge at your head, open your heart. For three, two, one, reach more, kick more, inhale, come all the way back up. Let it go. Take a breath in, and breath out. Let's find something new in the last round of dancer, each side. Left arm up, right hand to right foot, or right ankle. Right knee goes down, kick and reach. Kick and reach. You can use a wall here or a chair to steady yourself. Don't get too close to your support. You want some stretch, some reach. One more breath. Inhale, come all the way up. Smooth transition to the other side. Moving meditation, moving with breath. Left knee down. Left foot back, right fingers reach. Kick more and reach more. Kick more and reach more. And let it go. To the 
the balanced poses. Just come back into your equal standing pose. Build equanimity. So it builds the ability to be shifted, but not to be knocked out, not to be taken out. Whatever is important to you, whatever you're doing, what your guiding principles are. So open your heart, find your drishti, last balance pose, when, uh, twice on each side, let's find tree. So your right foot can come anywhere on your left leg as long as that leg is engaged. If it comes to your thigh, great. If it comes to your ankle, great. Fingers press together, hands press together, thumbs connect with your sternum. And then send that right knee back as you press your left foot into the earth. Extend your arms up. And then take your gaze. Spread your fingers, see the ceiling above you. Exhale, let it go. If you fall out, just come back in, or you can wait for us to do the other side. Whatever feels better to keep you in your power. Bring that left foot into your right thigh if it's accessible to you. Really make the connection, right foot to the floor, left foot to the right leg. Left knee back, grow your tree. One more breath. Make it big, release it. Go right into the first side. Take what you learned, what your body without any words around it has felt, and just transition that into something different. Maybe you interlace your fingers, press down and then up. Maybe you just send your arms up like you did. Maybe you stay with your hands at heart center. Do what you feel you need to do. What your body's telling you. Hold for three. Open your heart even more. Two. See the sky. And release. Last tree pose. Stand on your right. Bring your left foot into your thigh. Left toes point down, hands connect, heart center, and extend up. Lift your heart, press both feet into whatever they're contacting, draw your belly into your spine, open up, lean back, let it go. Nice work. Take whatever movement you need, walk around, just shift your weight back and forth a little bit. And come back to the top of your mat. Inhale, reach up. We're going to make our way down to the floor now. Exhale, fold forward. Step back into plank pose. Lower to the mat for five, four, three, two, one. Spread your arms out into a T. <clears throat> and so I'm going to. We'll go left first so that you can see me. So that left arm is coming straight out. Both arms are coming straight out from the body. So roll over into that left shoulder. Pick that right leg up. Bend the knee. Set the foot behind you. If you need to slide a block under your head, or a couch cushion, whatever, pillow under your head for some comfort, do it. Set the right foot behind your left knee. Bring your right fingertips down to the floor behind you or to your belt. And then your practice here is just to breathe into that sensation in your left shoulder. And it should be an opening sensation. It should not be pain. If you feel pain, back out a little bit. Let that right shoulder blade drop down. Maybe your right hip opens up a little bit more so that your um, hips shine more towards the sky than they do the wall beside you. Maybe not. Come back to center. Find that T again and go the other way. Roll over into your right shoulder. Rest in the right ear, where it needs to rest. Bring that left foot, bend in your left knee, set that left foot behind you, and then bring that left hand to the small of your back, fingertips 
Okay, on peut le retrouver. So this is a great exercise to do. You cool down when you get back home. We're at the end of a lifting session. Just always move with respect and do this with the warm body. More is not necessarily better. Just staying in about, if it was a one to 10, like a five to seven level of sensation. And let the breath and gravity do the work here. Notice if you're holding tension between your shoulder blades, just consciously release that, let that top, that left shoulder slide down. One more breath. And roll back into center. Just one back bend this morning. And we're going to combine that with a shoulder opener that maybe will be a little complementary to what we've been doing. So bring your uh, head to neutral. Interlace your hands behind your back, roll your shoulders down and away from your ears. Lift your heart up and then lift your legs up. Lift your arms up so that your fists come up off of your glutes. Big opening here. Press the knuckles on your fingers back toward your heels. Lift a little bit more, a little bit more, and then exhale. Bring your all the way down. Roll your hips a little bit side to side, let that go. And then press back into downward facing dog. Lift your right leg. Set that right foot outside of your right hand. And we're gonna come into this dragon lunge. We're gonna work on hips here as we make our way down towards the last few minutes of practice. So get nice and long and drop that left knee down to the mat. And then maybe this is enough for you as you relax your hips, keeping your belly engaged. Or maybe you can begin to walk your hands forward so that that elbow or those forearms come down to the floor. Or it's another great place to use your block to bring your forearms. Two more breaths. And then find your pigeon pose. So you can just work that right foot over to the left side of the mat. Drop your right knee. And then square your hips here. So if you need to bring this foot in closer to square your hips, which many people do, go for that. Put up nice and tall. And then hinge your hips and fall. If this is too intense, slide something under that right hip. And then begin to walk your arms forward, extend them nice and long. If this is impossible for you to do, even with some support, just roll around onto your back and find pigeon on your back. Flex both feet, cross that right foot over, interlace your fingers, and pull back. You got a lot of options there. You're going to be here about two, three more breaths. And then if you've got a block under your right hip, slide it out. Roll onto that right hip. Swing your left leg around. So you're going to come into a seated tree pose. I'm going to turn a little bit so maybe you can see a little bit better. Right knee comes down as much as possible. Sit up nice and tall. And then as you exhale, fold forward. You can bring your hands to, your, to the mat, to your calves, to your toes, wherever. And just get nice and long. And bring a little bit of slow movement into this. So as you inhale, come all the way up, press that right hand down beside, behind you, lift up with your left fingertips, open, and then on your exhale, come all the way back down into that fold. 
going to do that two more times. Inhale, come up. Plant your right palm. Left fingertips and hips. Reach up. Get long. Exhale, fold. Last one to reach up. Plant your palm. Reach up with the left. Get length in your left side body. Exhale. Come back into that fold. Inhale, release that. Um, send both feet out in front of you. Flex your feet, sit nice and tall. Reach up, fold. Three breaths here. Inhale for length, exhale to fold. When your inhale come up, and let's work our way back into that dragon lunge on the other side. So swing the right leg behind you. Bring the hands inside that left foot. Lengthen your right leg. Here's another way you want to get here. You can certainly do it. And then get length here. Press that right heel back. Left knee stacks over your left ankle. Begin to sink those hips down. And when you feel like your body's nice and long, go ahead and drop the knee. Allow that hip to continue to sink. And then bring the forearms down to something to block the mat. Now this knee stays over the ankle, but it can slide to the outside. So from front to back of your mat, it's going to stay right over the ankle, but the knee can roll out to the side a little bit. I wouldn't get crazy with it, but if you need that, then make some space to it. And then make your way into the pigeon. Come up on your hands. Walk that left foot over to the right side of your mat. There will be a difference from side to side. This is a tighter side for me. It might be the opposite for you. I know I'm going to need a block under that side. If you need to work the pose from your back, do that. Square your heart. And when your hips and heart are squared, lower down. The only things you're doing here are keeping your belly engaged. Let everything else relax. And breathe with that rhythmic ujjayi breath. Three more breaths. Scan that left leg, especially the quads and the hamstrings. See if you're holding on to something. You don't need to. Let it go. One more breath. And then if you have a block or pillow underneath that left hip, move it out of the way, and find your seated tree pose. It's called Janu Shirsasana on the side. Yeah. So root down in both of those sitting bones. Heart uh, shines towards your right toes. Reach up and fold. Still, now we'll find that little flow that we found on the other side. So on your inhale, bring that left arm up, plant the palm behind you. Inhale, reach up, press that right foot down, reach the right hand over your head and back, and then exhale, settle it down. Three more times with your breath. stronger your connection with the floor, with your hand, with your foot, the more you're going to be able to find in the pose. The more you're grounded, the more you fly, the more you grow. I don't know how many that is. Let's do one more. And exhale, bring it all the way back down. And um, 
Come to easy cross leg position. Sit nice and tall. And then on your exhale, breathe with your heart forward. And if you got a block, you can bring your forehead down to the long edge of the block. Doesn't matter how far you fold. If you're nowhere that close, that's fine. Just let your arms go out in front of you. Find some ease here. And on your inhale, come up to seated and roll all the way back onto your back. Bring your knees up into your chest. And then on your exhale, drop them to the left side. Bring your arms out into a T. If you want to wrap your legs here like eagle legs, that's available to you. Both legs bent or that left leg straight, whatever feels like it's going to give you some opening. That right shoulder goes down towards the mat. The left, uh, right knee comes towards the mat. Continue with your belly lock, continue with your ujjayi breath. And switch sides. Come back to center. Draw those knees in. And then if you need to change that orientation by crossing, whatever you need to do, drop to the right side. Left knee comes towards the mat. Left shoulder stays on. Gaze goes across your left fingers. Center as you breathe in, uncross your legs if they were crossed, bring your knees into your heart, wrap your arms around them, squeeze in, up, up, take a big breath in, and on your exhale, just release it all the way down to the mat. Take a couple breaths, get yourself arranged here, be still for two minutes. Doesn't seem like a lot to ask. This is the most important part of the practice where everything that we did finds its integration, finds its place in your body and your mind. You just consciously begin the process of letting go, let go of your regular ujjayi breath. Let go of your belly lock. Just feel your connection to the floor and feel the floor gravity. and release into it. Take one more breath in. Exhale. Let everything go. And take your Shavasana.
notice what that feels like. And then bring movement from your fingers and hands up into your arms, your shoulders, from your toes and feet up into your legs and hips. And then take about three or four, maybe five full breaths to bring yourself all the way up to seated. So then you roll through, take a breath or two on your side. Be very mindful and notice the sensations that you have as you move your way up to seated, keep your eyes closed. Arrange yourself so that your legs are crossed comfortably, your spine is nice and tall, your belly is not locked but engaged, and your shoulders are relaxed onto your back. Tuck your chin just a little, create some space in the back of your neck. Breathe into this shape. So you've come full circle child's pose to corpse pose. And now you step off your mat with maybe a little bit more openness, a little bit more equanimity, a little bit more awareness. Bring your hands together at the center of your heart and then lift them up to your third eye, to your forehead. Open your eyes. Widen me sees and honors the light